everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Reverend Donna Serafina. I am a spiritualist reverend and a psychic medium, as well as I do have a background in criminal justice and victims advocacy. Today, I would like to present to you a reading that I did for two friends of Kaylee Gunn Calvis. It's just a beautiful reading, but I would like to explain something before we get into the reading. So when we're doing the reading, first Kaylee is providing information that only the other person would know about. And the other person is confirming that um, that indeed it, it does bring back a memory with Kaylee, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, several things Kaylee confirmed. Uh, Kaylee was going into the murder scene a little bit, um, <clears throat> and I was trying to hold back on that. And then I would say about three quarters of the way through the reading, um, the friends made it clear that they actually did want to know what occurred. Now, before you judge, so I don't want someone listening to that going, how could you say this to these girls? What I can tell you as a survivor of homicide is it's worse not knowing. And the reason it's worse not knowing is because your mind can create endless scenarios that spin around in your head when you're trying to go to sleep for years. So even if you understand what happened and then grieve that, it's much, much better, uh, personally in my experience, to be able to know what happened, to understand what happened, and then to be able to let that part go as far as the head spinning nightmares that it can cause. So that's what's going on later, probably the last 15 minutes, is they wanted to know what actually occurred there and why this person would do that. So I hope you, with that said, okay, oh, I guess I should just tell you this little story. I was going to not say it until later because it happened a couple of days afterwards. Maybe I should put it at the end. No, nah, I already did the end. Um, I don't want to do a spoiler alert. I'll talk to you about it later. I'm, let's just get with the reading. Um, the reading is really nice, and these are with um, people that Kaylee went to school with or that she knew since she was young. All right. All right. I hope you enjoy the reading. Again, my name is Reverend Donna Serafina. All right. Thank you. So I know Kaylee will come through and I have like spirit energy on my legs. I'm going to ask a question only because I think it's probably all over the internet anyway. And maybe I saw a picture or something, but was she a cheerleader in high school? And were you guys too or something? Oh, okay. She kept showing me that and I'm like, I'm not going to say that. That's so cliche. And plus, I'm sure I've seen a picture of you being a cheerleader. That's what I was li literally meditating and when that kept coming into my mind and then I was, I kept saying that to her, like, I'm not even going to say that because it's obvious I would have seen a picture or, or something, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And so somebody, somebody, she keeps showing me like how when they have one person up there spinning, like when everyone else is holding the person up or something, or like when they go up on their Everyone's holding them up and then they just start. Maybe they're not spinning. Maybe they're standing there. But do you know what I'm talking about? So, okay. So she was showing me that. That's so funny. For some reason, she's showing me like a spotted leopard. Like. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then see, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And I, yeah, I got what? Probably, you know, some big lion, like wild cat type thing with spots on it. Yeah, okay, so that's, that absolutely, like I got chills on my legs again. So absolutely, so she's showing you stuff to prove, yeah, it's really me. You know what I mean, like that? Okay. 
Interesting. Okay. She feels like um, she's showing this. So she, <laughs> she, she showed she showed me that Jack Decker guy, but he's on the other side of the cheetah thing. So it's like it's really interesting how she shows it, and I have the spirit energy to know that that's what she's showing me. But it's like it seems symbolic somehow. It's like. You see the cheetah, but then he's just as far away in the background. Yeah, I don't know either. I, you know, I don't really know the meaning of it other than maybe, maybe it's like that. I don't know. You know, the, anything I say would be an interpretation. Oh, yeah, maybe in case one of you wants to go out with him. I actually have spirit energy on my legs. You know what? Yes, it is because okay. So she has chills. So, so what? What she's showing me that I would interpret is that kind of like she was leaving him behind anyway. But then when I said, like in case one of you want to go out with him, she I got chills on both legs. Like, isn't that funny? Um, um, and so that's obviously confirmation. Like they do that they do different levels of different kinds of energies on my legs is showing me. So if, if you guys are friends with him and you decide you want to go out with him, don't feel guilty. That's def that's definitely how I would, um, or, or be mad at any girl that does. <laughs> that's funny. That's good feedback. So, um, that, cause yeah, yeah, she's, she's pretty good at this. She's pretty, I don't know. Did you listen to the reading I did with Zana's friend? Because Kaylee, that lady wanted to hear from uh, Maddie, but I could see Maddie right there in her bedroom, but Kaylee was like in front of me. And then when I said, well, I'll try to pull Maddie. It's like, she literally put her hands on my face. Like, no, listen to me. <laughs> like that. So, yeah, it's a convenient. I used to have a really strong friend like that because then you can let them deal with everything. <laughs> yeah, this girl, too. Like, if someone gave me a hard time at a party, this girl would fight with them or not physically, but, you know, and it's like I could just sit there and look pretty and not even worry about it. <laughs> so she's showing me, which is interesting. I don't think that's the style now, but I'm not um, so aware but anyways that she's showing me her kind of like her bags are packed but she said uh, the the outfit almost looks like a retro of a 50s outfit like i know interesting huh like you know how in the 50s someone wore a pencil shaped skirt i don't know i think it's more darker in color but it's like it's i it's almost like a retro um I'm going off to the office, but I'm going to look really sexy while I'm doing it. Or like, and not really sexy, but just kind of like the, the clothing is nice quality and fits well. Yeah. And it's like, she has this suitcase here. She's ready to go. So, so I guess she's just showing me that like, like I already know outside of this reading, I know outside of this reading that she, I mean, you know, obviously I've read about it. So I know that she'd got a job offer or internship or something down in Texas. So I know that, but so I'm not trying to say that to pretend I don't know that, you know, it's like, I know that, but she is showing me and then she keeps it kind of there. It's like, that's not in style for you guys now though, nowadays, is it? Oh yeah, that could be it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, oh yeah. And maybe that's what she's showing is that she's dressed for work, dressed for the office or that looks really pretty because it's like, um, yeah, it's like, um, she's wearing like, um, she's wearing like high heels. She's wearing high heels. She, she, well, they're like, yeah, more like spiky heels and, um, this skirt looks, it fits nicely and this, a sweater fits nicely. So she's just showing the outfit. 
And let's see, she keeps having it. I'm wondering if there's someone else there to say hi to you or what. I'm a, I don't know. Because they, when they hold, that's what I'm saying, like when they hold something, there's more about it. I don't know. Did you say you had a grandma or something? Oh, your mom. But did, okay, did she dress like that? Because sometimes other ones will pop in to say hi. And that could be it. So we'll, we'll just see. I got a very mild spirit energy. That's probably not it. So what I'm going to do is kind of let my, cause that's what they'll do is they'll just be like, Oh, okay. This person's open and talking. Let, let, let grandma will jump in and like, you know, so it's like, so it's like, I'll just, um, let my mind go blank for again. I'm just feeling like, I'm feeling a little something from the crime, but it's not anything that needs to be talked about or anything like that. Um, but she feels something to her stomach and I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying that I, it's like a push. Um, and I'm not sure why she's saying it. You guys aren't trying to hear any about that, right? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. If anything, that's what I was telling her before the thing I was like, you talk about whatever you want. I'm a hundred percent blank. If, if you're talking about it, I'll say, but then here I'm seeing something. I'm going, no, I don't think I'll say that, <laughs> but yeah. And she's not showing it graphically, but for some reason, so I'm not seeing like what I saw that first time I'm seeing some kind of something pushed to her, to her stomach that she's, and so maybe, so I'll just blank and, and just see what she, what she wants to say. If, if she's what she wants to say about that anything about anything. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of seeing falling over and I'm just, you know, I don't, um, why she should Oh no, I see. Well, I see her fall over. Like, I'm just seeing it, you know, it's just, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So I, I don't know if it's all in their energy field or what. Cause it, um, let's just see, Kaylee. I really got to blank my mind because it's like, I'm just seeing all the murder and it's like, I don't know. I want to just let myself go blank and, um, because I don't think, cause I'm wondering, like, it's not necessary to go through that. And it makes me kind of wonder, like, first Xana was doing that too, though. Um, she was showing me a little stuff and I was just like, I'm not going to say that out in front of her friends, you know? And, um, and so maybe it's just like the, 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 because it, they experienced it, maybe it's so, so recent or like in their energy field or something like that where even when they're communicating, because I was actually surprised. Oh, yeah, now I'm getting a little chills. I was actually surprised when I was doing those readings um, that, that they were still experienced, still seem to be experiencing trauma, you know? Yeah. Okay. Cause you know what? I don't even need to put this on YouTube either. Like, unless she says good, um, and unless she's like, has a lot to communicate, I, I, I don't need to do it, but okay. So yeah, you, I mean, if you have questions and if, cause it's just like, I'm floating in this trauma and seeing these murder and it's like, what's well, good. I don't know that that's necessary. Oh no. Kaylee is far from confused. <laughs> she's funny. Like last night she came in. See, that's why I like doing readings with friends because then that spirit really knows now that spirit's got an attachment or a, a, an inter interjection to me too. So they know, oh, here's a person. No, she came in last night because I was going to do a little meditation. And then um, 
no, she's funny. And I could film my daughter and she was like, is your mom always like this? Like, cause I said I was going to do it. And then I started going on my cell phone and stuff. <laughs> and, um, uh, what? Yeah. And so, you know, the, the stuff about earthbound, I don't know if people made that up, you know, people who like to sell books and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's made up in books and because, okay, so like there's the astral plane, there's our dimension, the physical, and then there's that astral plane and stuff, but they can go back and forth. They're not stuck there. No, they're not stuck there. No one's stuck there. The people, no, I know people say silly things like that, is, but that, that, how, that how it works is there, there I think there is people there, but those are ones that don't want to go in, into their life review and stuff like that. Like say my mom. <laughs> no, when my mom died, I think she was staying on a different plane for a little while because she was trying to avoid her life review like that. But none of, none of these, none of your friends are like on that level. And it's like, they can, they, they are in connection, but they're still, they still have this trauma, um, energy, I think, um, surrounding them. And you know what, when uh, other ones that I have to ones like the other, those children in Idaho, yeah, they, they're still traumatized. I, it, it's a real traumatic way to die when someone's murdered. And I'm, I'm not trying to hurt you or traumatize you guys by telling you that, but Okay. And do you want to tell me or do you want me to tell you or what do you want? Okay. So we'll see. Um, so it's like, I think there's just a little more about the murder, uh, um, experience of being murdered. It's like, um, well, their murders were particularly brutal, right? Yeah. And, and um, and, One thing is that I know every single, cause I've done a couple hundred where there are unsolved homicides and stuff. And it's like every single, with the exception of two, every single spirit person wanted justice. Every single one. I, I do know that. Um, and I also know that they're like with angels and spirit guides around them. So there's, they're, they're not stuck anywhere. There's no such thing as that. That whole we're an earthbound spirit thing is so, some spirits have a choice they want to leave. So like maybe if they like their house really a lot and they want to stay in that house, like as a, and that's why you'll have ghosts and stuff that actually, that, but they're, they're not really stuck there. And I think some mediums that go, oh yeah, I'm crossing them over. Oh, as if the angels can't think about that. And, or the spirit guides cannot. I mean, their spirit guides are way smarter than us and they can help them. They're, they're not, there's no being stuck on that, like that. They can go back and forth. I just am a little surprised. I guess just the amount of trauma, the brutality of it, it just, um, Zanna was, Zanna was, Zanna was really nice though. She, um, she, she just wanted people to remember her, like, happy memories and stuff. Okay. So we're going to ask about this fight. And then the, then this, is this two different girls? The one of the Snapchat or is it the same girl? Is it both? Like, is one of you wondering about the, You know, that's funny because it's like when she said that about Jack, it was like she was having a double meaning then too. It's like, yeah, you could go out with him, but then that's a big part of your guys's thing. And then, um, so it's, okay, so it's that and then about this, oh, uh, uh, falling out. Okay. 
Yeah, well, she's saying you could have Jack. <laughs> so, so I don't think she's all that mad. Yeah, so it's like she doesn't feel, and I got I got nice spirit energy. She does, she's not holding a grudge or anything like that. Okay, let's, you know, people, we live life, right? And a part of life is getting mad at other people and just working out all these different scenarios against the reflection of other people, right? It's, it's not something that you need to permanently carry around with you because it's like she's still an actual person. She's just, unfortunately, doesn't get to have the whole physical life, you know? So, so I'm going to see if I can pick some stuff up from her. And like, because it was just like, all I've seen is all this murder and then, you know, feeling all this trauma energy. And, um, yeah, and she's giving me chills about that. So it's like, she's, I want to wonder if she's still, still just like, man, <laughs> just got to pray, like send them love and pray for them every day and stuff like that. Light a candle for them and stuff. But let me see. I just try to get something from her because... It's almost like the floaty energy. Oh yeah, no, you can talk about anything you want. And doing a good reading is more important than putting something on YouTube. Plus I can just talk, sit there and talk myself on YouTube. And doing a good reading for spirit person is, is more important. And plus when I did that first reading, it was, uh, so shocking and so terrifying. Um, I, I like lock my freaking, all my doors and windows until they caught a guy. It was, it's so scary. Okay. Okay. She's giving me a little chill. So she might be, um, I'll just go blank for a second. See, I've just repeatedly seen that one photo of her where she's, it says happy birthday or something and she's wearing the white shirt and putting her hand up in the air. Do you know that photo on her Instagram? Do you know, do you know the photo I'm talking about? And would that specific photo have any meaning to you? Like, were you there or is there anything about that one photo? Cause she's actually shown it to me like five times. Okay, but is there anything about that photo that um, would mean anything then? Okay. Okay. And um, the other thing is you might think of something a few days later or something like look at it and go, oh, there's that thing I gave her in the background. Or do you know what I mean? There's... Yeah, so, but there's just, like this lady, one time I was doing a reading and I said, I'm seeing your daughter in a red jogging suit. And she literally spent like 10 minutes explaining that her daughter would, doesn't wear red and wouldn't wear a red jogging suit and stuff like that. And then after we got off the phone, she said she walked down her hall and there was an 8 by 10 photo of her daughter wearing a red jogging suit. Like she, she took a, but just, so just keep it in your mind, um, that she's just shown me that over and over and it, it and what about the pose just even the pose i i don't okay oh she knew all the poses okay that's prob that's probably what it is um that's funny all the pose yeah it's a different world when you don't have to pay for photo developing right Yeah. I think, because I'm kind of like asking her, well, what, what do you, would you want to say to them? And it's just more like, then, then it's about love. Um, but it's a, it's a heavier stuff. It's a heavier thing. I, you know, I have to say, I'm just, well, I'll just give it a couple more minutes because it's like, 
Or I don't know if it is that she wants me to see something about her murder, and then even if I did, I would want to hang up the phone first. But just because I don't want to be rattling off poor, horrific things. She's showing me out on her deck. So she, it's like going out on the um, back. She's showing me out on the deck. Just, I'm not on the night anything happened. Um, she's like on her deck, like kind of looking down. Like she has her two arms. She has her two arms on the balcony. And then she's kind of looking to the side and looking down. And... Yeah, and it, like, goes on. I think she's trying to get across. It goes on both sides. So, like... Oh, yeah, when you have a baby, that that's your whole world, then. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's normal. And she seems sad, too. And may, and maybe she's... she See, she could be addressing that, acknowledging that, or she could be saying she's sad, too. You know, like, on the other side, she's she's feeling all these emotions, too, of loss and, and this kind of stuff. Or she could be acknowledging your sadness as well, or both. I mean, it is a sad situation. There's no way about it. You know, yeah, she's giving me spirit energy about that. I'm going to get uh, um, everyone to pray for her. Like, I think I'm, I'm going to put something, all of them, a prayer for them. And how I feel, you know what, how I feel? This is not mediumship, but this is just how I feel. I want to tell you because I just feel led to tell you. During this... Oh, I do got a little spirit energy, but during this, it won't be long before once they, you know, um, start trying to humanize this killer and then mystify this killer and then the media makes all this more money off, then drawing attention to this killer and making it all cool. And then, you know, it's like, you know, the killer gets famous or whatever. And it feels like, see, I was feeling this yesterday, but I can't remember if it was from her or me. Um, because I was starting to meditate and I could feel Nicole, my daughter and her. Uh, but then all of a sudden I was like, Oh no, I got to check all these things. And then it was like, I, I literally could feel her say, is your, is your mom, your mom always like this or something like I'm like ADD or something like that. But it's like about making some hashtags, remember the victims and, keep putting their names, like starting a movement to every time the media tries to glorify the killer. Because that's what they do. They do it every time, every, every time. And I, then it's all about the killer and stuff like that. And I wasn't, I, I can't remember if it was partly from her or if it was, I was just getting it, but it's something to think about. It's something to think about. And if you guys are bored and you're on your, your, um, whatever social media you use, you could think of stuff like that, you know, not that nothing you got to work hard at, but you know, nothing that you got to like, that's a chore, but in all this, that's what's going to happen. And, the, and it, it's disgusting. Oh my God. Okay. So let's see if there's She's, yeah, she's done. Um, I don't want to say, oh, this is from her, this is from her. And it, but it feels like it's either that or from spirit guides or, but if a little bit, it feels like she's pretty business like about these things, you know? Hashtag something. So let's see. Do you remember a hashtag she ever used that was like something to, I, it, like the name Aubrey Rose? 
came into my mind, but now I know, I know from her thing, she used that Jade thing, but it, Aubrey Rose is someone I know, so it wouldn't be that, but it was like, did she ever make one for you that was like your, a first, middle, and last thing, but a nickname or something, something along these lines? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Okay, that's what she's trying to show me then. Okay, she's showing something. Um, that's what she's trying to show me. No, that's it for sure. That's it for sure. So at least she's, she's showing, she's showing, um, that she does not feel like she has even an iota, not one scintilla of energy that has any problem with anything either one of you ever did. Like, you know, whether you ever got in a fight, I'm not saying that, but how she is right now, it's not even, it's not in her energy field of worrying about any, any, like, little misdeed or not seeing her or fighting with her. Do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, it's very clear that way. Her energy is very clear. It's just, she feels a little sad. She feels sad. She does feel sad. Through time, but always know there's like people over there helping too, but it's, it's a, it's, it's pretty heavy thing. She just said in that, cause like I'm in my mind, I'm like, well, do you, do you have anything like you want to say? And it's, it's, uh, she just, it's love, but with a lot of heartbreak, like how you guys are feeling. She's feeling that way too even on her side, you know, because all, all it is when, when you are out of your body, you're still you. Just like, you know, if you had to get your hand amputated, you would actually still be you. You wouldn't be your hand somewhere and you lose your whole body. You're still you. And it's like, she, she's in a, um, sad, she's sad too. I hate to call people up and say that, but that's just the truth. But, you know? She feels like it's not fair either, too. So she feels like this isn't fair, too. Like, all these... She actually has... It's just all the real feelings you... I guess you would feel, you know? The feelings that you would feel if you... If you. She almost feels pissed off. Like... Yeah, I, I know... She's not happy about it, you know? She's just not happy about it. It's like she's going to start a thing. I think maybe that hashtag thing is from her. But I don't want to say with 100% certainty, but she's giving me the feeling again. And um, so just it's something to think about. If, like, just know that it's almost like, and I'm getting chills about this, Every criminal case, it's like these waves of energy, right? The media will play out. So for the first month, it's like all they could find is sexy pictures. And then they find the killer. And it's like everyone could hate him for a while. And then when they got bored of that, all of a sudden they'll try to draw them in by making him all mystical or, you know, mysterious. And you know what I mean? And, and it, it, it just think, you know, in your spare time, if you come up with ideas of like hashtags that confront that, um, I guess that would be good. She, she seems like, um, Kaylee feels like one to take things on, you know, that way. Um, so that's, yeah, I get chills. So that's an idea. And maybe I'll, I, I will at least put clips of this 
like, I don't know about the whole thing or whatever, not to anything that identifies you guys, but clips of this and put that idea out there. Cause there's, you know, it's like that, that idea can expand. And, um, that's just, see, she, she, Kaylee does feel like she would create a movement. Like she would, she would deal with it. She would deal with it. And that's a way to deal with the sadness too. It feels like for her, cause it's like, okay, so cause she showed me herself out on the deck, she was getting sadder and sadder. And then she like sat down on something and like she felt sad. But then when it's like, we're talking about this, it feels like she's standing up a little, you know, standing up. Um, so it's like, that's one way to deal with the sadness. And, um, Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. A absolutely. I could, I could totally get the, like, okay, this happened. I'm, I'm going to do something about it, but she's like on the other side, but okay, like this happened, but I'm going to do something about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And I, and then, you know, I have like these weird chills on my legs. So it's, it's, um, and I think that's something to think about for sure. To address once and for all, like this dynamic, this dynamic that's, it'll be coming within about a month, you know, as soon as they get sick of whatever, sick of like showing the guy and oh we all hate him it's like now then it drowns out and then now they have to find a new way to sell advertising uh so they'll give him a name or some shit no okay let's see I feel like, I feel like that's really all she really has right now. It's almost like she just feels sad. You know, she doesn't feel beaten down sad. She feels like she has some energy, but, um, yeah, she's a very unhappy about what, not just the, you know, what happened, but she's really unhappy about losing her life. You know what I mean? And she kind of just feels that way. And I think just continue to pray for her, you know, and just send her love. Just do that. Just like imagine her in a ball of white healing energy or some, somewhat, how, however you want to do it. Like if you pray for her and stuff like that. But just send love, ask God to just surround her in love and, and all of them, you know, all of them. And, and, um, so that they feel love from people. I think that's, yeah. So do you have any questions? Oh. Has she come through about, about this Brian guy? Oh my God. Did you hear that first reading I did? That one where I was hooked to his brain. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that's, that one has like 380,000 views on it. And the reason is because I do this kind of trance mediumship when I'm alone, where I go out of body, like, I've practiced doing, have you guys heard of astral projection? Okay. So I practice that and then that helps me. And I work with the same spirit guides and like all the angels and Jesus and every, like I call them all in like, to the point, I, it's been going on for years and I trust them and, and I allow them to take my consciousness and they, they did and they 
had me following him and then they put me into his mind before he went into the house. And it's like, I describe everything that happens, but not like, yeah, oh yeah, go back. It's on November 18th that I put that, or, or, or I did on November 18th. And, um, and so like I even said, he, I keep getting bread and all that stuff. So apparently his, this name Coburg is the largest family owned bread company in Europe. It's not weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should listen to that. If, um, so it's like, I, it's pretty bad what he did to Kaylee. Is that what you asked? He was stalking her. So, so in that, okay, oh, now I'm getting chills. Okay, so maybe she just, okay, so now I'm getting chills. Maybe I'm blocking her by not wanting to, okay, so it, she was, he was stalking her because, okay, so she, they showed me in that first reading, they showed me benches around a tree, all right? And I hadn't looked at any photos of Main Street. And it's like, he approached her there and they actually even showed me, okay, you see the grub track, but this approach seems to be in the daytime, not at the same time. But they showed me the Jack Showalter guy in the background over by the grub truck and that this is two separate people, right? And then they showed me he was six feet tall. Like I got his entire um, description right. I said, this guy is six feet tall. He has brunette hair. He has curvy on the top of his hair. He's talking to her. She, he's older than her. I said he's around 30. It's like he's 28. I said he's trying to like bring up some, you know, the kind of classes where you all have to take and, and um, Kaylee. And because at that time, so just know that I didn't even know, couldn't barely tell them apart because I, I, I just looked at like a photo and then go sit in my room and do a meditation. And um. And so I, I was going back and forth, like, I kept feeling like I'm waiting for Maddie. And, but it's like, I don't know if she's waiting for Maddie or who's waiting for Maddie. But then I said, it's the rounder faced girl, which is, yeah, yeah, Kaylee. And so, and so, um, so she's sitting on one of these benches by the trees. She might have been waiting for Maddie down the street from the Mad Greek, or she might have, whatever. I don't know. You have to listen to it. But I had his description a hundred percent there. And, um, he started stalking her. Yeah. And even, even after that for the last, cause this was like November 22nd. So for the last month, people go, the police said he wasn't stalking her, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, he was, I don't care what the police say. It's like, I saw it because I was out of my body to that place in time where I actually saw this occur. And I saw him approach her there and, and that's when it started. And so it's like, yeah, it wasn't surprising to me when the police said it went on for months or whatever. And no, he, he was a total stranger. He was a stranger and, um, he came up to her and started talking to her literally. He came out of one of those places around there and I don't know. And, and there's something about a buck and it's like, okay. A lot of people said, oh, they thought, oh, it was Moscow bakery or whatever. Um, by friendship square. This is where the most likely I think this occurred. It could have occurred at friendship square. It could have occurred. There's one bakery called, um, the petite Fleury cafe where there's a, a tree in the middle with a round bench. And then at the sorority, she used to live out. There's a tree with a round bench. That's what like all these people look up stuff from my readings, but I think it's most likely around friendship square. And he, and one of the coffee shops around there also has a buck for its logo, you know, those animals. Um, so he could, so she could have been sitting there like waiting for Maddie or something like along these lines, but he comes up, he came out of nowhere and approached her and started talking to her. She didn't know him. She did like, you'll, you'll hear on that first reading. She did not know this guy. 
But what was, what was weird in that reading, and I'm getting chills about that too. It's like, what was weird in that reading was, um, when, so I'm connected to his brain. So then I started talking like it almost in the first person, like, but then when he was killing them, it was like, I was behind him again. But like when I was like first going in the house with him, it's like I said, I feel like I've been in here before. Yeah, and he, he definitely wasn't, well, the thing is, if he had been in there before, it would be most likely, like, it made me wonder all the time he'd been stalking them for, like, what, two or three months or something, if he had ever figured out when they're gone and just walked in himself and walked around the house. I really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And well, that night he just walked right up to it and it was open, walked right in. And, um, and you know, you've seen that parking lot that someone could be sitting there at night and watching them for hours, you know? Oh, oh yeah. But it was like in that first reading, uh, you, yeah, you listen to it after this, you'll know exactly what happened. I mean, okay, so he walks in. See, now, even in the affidavit, they're trying to act like he went upstairs first, killed the girls, came down and killed Zan. And, I, and I'm just like, I don't believe it, even if they said that. Because when I was with him, I didn't know whose room was whose. And it's like, he, I said, he went, he went in there and he, he went to this um, room to the left and he killed. And the guy was up, like, woke up and was like, what the fuck, you know? And, uh, yeah, he stabbed him real fast. He stabbed Zanna. It, 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 see, the, the girl that survived, um, if she heard him go back in there, it might be because if Zana was still alive and he heard her, then he went back and finished her off. But it's like, I, I truly believe, and I'm sure it will probably come out later, that he actually went in their room first because he wanted to spend more time. And I do believe, yes, that Kaylee was his target and his fantasies. I mean, I even taught, he, is the most he's not even a fucking human i'm sorry for this word but he's not even human in the way he thinks like he's just a psychopath um just full of rage and um because he can't have these pr cute little girls you know and um and and they to him represented all girls that he couldn't have Yeah. Yeah. So, so when I, in that reading, I say she's talking to him, but she's not interested in him. In, yeah. And, and so for him, he was awkward with women anyway. So it's like, so he, he would, he saw her he, and, and it was like she and Maddie and probably Zanna too, they represented what he couldn't have. And so it wasn't, it wasn't even only them. It was just like, he had this feeling in general and then this occurred where he met her and then she's, then he starts stalking her and he, she didn't know him. There was no, you're invited to our party type of thing. But I just thought it was weird that when I was attached to his brain and I was in the house, I felt like I'd been there before.
easy because all he has to do is sit in the parking lot and watch when they all come and go and he knows at a certain time they're all of them are gone and then walk over and go in he pro i i think see then that would be a jump so not something i've seen but it's just like because i had that feeling it's like logically he probably figured out a time and then he walked in their house all over the place making himself comfortable you know so he knew because i even said in the reading i said this I said, he went and killed the people in the room on the left, right, on the same floor as the kitchen. And I said, he knew exactly where he was going because he skipped the door on the, uh, the other door uh, on that floor. He didn't even try to open it. Yeah. Yeah. And I say that in there. And, and so now it comes out that, that, uh, um, what's the girl's name? Dylan. It turns out that Dylan had moved up to that room, but he, he already knew where he was going. He didn't even, it's like he didn't even try to go in her room. Why? He, he already knew he, where he was going. He was going for Maddie and, um, Kaylee and preferably, and Kaylee, the fantasy he had about Kaylee is he fantasized this is how sick this guy is he fantasized in his head that he wanted to that he saw that she saw okay like literally that's this guy is beyond he's over the top sick like ted bundy and it's like when everyone says oh how did he lose his knife sheath well probably he tried to unbelt his pants because they're you, you know don't those aren't those worn on your pant belt it, it does they don't snap off normally you you can only put them through your belt but the thing is he tried to get it up in his, and all his grossness and then when there's all this blood he like stayed there and then he wanted to he wanted to And so he goes in and then he started feeling like, I think because he didn't expect this little scuffle to happen, um, he felt like he need, he wanted to go kill the other ones too. So it's like, yeah, it's so, something weird. And then well, in there, and then she, they had me feel her trauma though. There's, I mean, that she felt so much trauma that uh it was like she was out of her body like totally co totally completely disassociated like i couldn't even barely handle the feeling of trauma it'd be like enough to make someone go insane literally like not even in your body not even you can't even think to do anything because you're so just over the top i don't know about the whole frozen thing because she was panicking she was yeah it's, it wouldn't be that hard if but, but it was, it was, she was like falling over backwards onto her bed and not even in her body. Just like so much trauma was like, she was outside of her body. Like, I know, I know I'm going to have to do a reading about that because, um, I, I, I close enough to see bushy eyebrows. That's pretty freaking close. You, you, knew, you know what I wondered too? It's like, is there any, is there any connection with this survey that he, um, well, he's an, he's another one of these weird people. So it's like, could one of these people have inadvertently, even, even without, trying to if they filled out the whole survey about like basically what's your fantasy about a crime or you know if you were gonna do a murder and how would you get away and and you know what if or do you know what i mean yeah and that and that he could have picked one no but but they showed me that the first interaction with kaylee who i believe is kaylee um, was over and I believe it's in a friendship square, but see, that is something I could be wrong about, but it, it is where benches are put around tree. And, and I think it's friendship square. 
Um, but it could it could be one of those two other places. But he approached her and she did not know him. She did not recognize him. And I said, I, I mean, I literally said his entire description perfectly. So, so I know that it was, this is not a friendship she had. This is not some, you know, something like that at all. She was like just being polite. And he's like trying to talk about like, history or these classes everyone has to take so i trying to make a common ground and she's kind of looking at him because he, he looks like he's around 30 and it's like she's she's just not quite sure she even believes he even goes to the college like that's what i was saying in the reading yeah it's yeah she was skeptical of even what he was saying she had zero interest in going out with him. She really wasn't interested in talking to him, but she wasn't being rude to him. She wasn't, she didn't feel afraid of him. It was just like some man trying to talk to her that she was not interested in. Yeah. So, um, so that's, you know, basically he saw her in his whole lifetime of feeling awkward and inadequate and out of touch with humanity and and uh and he went in their house with so much anger um and and he was happy like they're gonna they'll try to get some people to feel sorry for him or something this guy was happy when he after he murdered kaylee and maddie he was sitting there for a few minutes in the room and he would he would have liked to stay longer and but he was on a high he was exhilarated he he was very pleased but it's beyond pleased it's more like just exhilarated on a adrenaline high um he didn't have one ounce of remorse none it is sick it is the it, it i can't even think of him as a human I really can't. Yeah, he looks, you know what? Oh. It makes me wonder too. It's like, I want to look up, um, well, what if, what if, Ted Bundy or something like that. Like he look, his eyes look so much like Ted Bundy. Isn't that weird? Yeah, there's some weirdness back in there. Uh, I think back in there. It weird with his mom. And did you know, I put up this little reading two days before they arrested him. And I was saying, and it, and I knew he was out his parents, which is really weird. Cause I, cause I, you know, turned out he was. But, um, I said his mom knows something's wrong and she better not confront him. And I said, lady, if you're listening to this, do not say a word because he will kill you too. He, he's in a killing mode. Like, um, you know, and yeah, and I think they arrested him the next day after I put that. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Eight, eight, eight lawyers have already offered for, to represent him pro bono. So they could get famous, you see? Yeah, and, that, and then it'll all be about him. He's a narcissist for sure. And I, I think that's why he got caught is because his belief that he's smarter than everyone else. He thought everyone else was too stupid to catch him. Huge, huge. He believes himself to be superior. So, oh God, he's so evil. But the one good thing is I don't think the government will let it happen. I think the government knows that guy in particular, is so dangerous that, that whatever money they have to spend to make sure he goes to prison, I think they're going to do it, you know? 
I, re I really do. I mean, they know the government knows this is like this is this this. If he didn't get caught, would be another Ted Bundy. You know, really, I I really feel like the the feds and stuff they'll spend whatever they need i mean look at all did you see like the guy with the um machine gun type of thing um like even when they were transporting him even when they took him to court the guy that followed him in had the big automatic gun rifle oh yeah oh yeah i don't think the government's gonna let this guy walk like I really, I, I mean, they know this guy, this guy's beyond dangerous. Yeah, with the DNA and all that stuff. And did you see on that, um, one on, um, Zana, the reading with Zana, she was showing me about the, her pants button. And, but it was really... It was really, then, then it was like a day or two later, they released the affidavit and it was like the, um, the button, the class, the, the snap for the thing, that's where his DNA was. So that's what she was, they were giving us a premonition of that. She was telling us about that. And I think then there was one other clue that, um, oh, that's it. I want to tell you too, is I think three, um, I kept getting a three before I was calling you a three. Yeah, it might, it might have been my daughter, but then I, but then it's just like, um, I just want to say it, just keep, keep it in your mind if that means anything. Um, or if you think of something later that it means. But yeah, and I don't really feel a lot from her, um, uh, right now. Do you have any other questions about like the other side or anything like that? I think what I was seeing was pretty traumatic. Like you, you listen to the video. I, I, I can send you a link to it or do you think it'd be easy to find? Yeah, it's just the first one I did on this, and um, I uploaded it November 22nd, and it was so vicious. Kaylee wasn't alive by the time there wasn't last moments like that. He, I mean, one of them, he was just slashing at them, and then, like, one of them tried to get up or something, and he just pushed her back and just slashed. And I, th I think that might have been Maddie. Yeah, and it's like I heard he then he he must have moved their bodies because he put one on on top of the other one or something. Someone said. I don't know if that's true, but there wasn't there wasn't any last moments. It was it was a vicious vicious attack, like vicious. Yeah, it's it 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 was just brutal. It doesn't sound like it from the affidavit. It was like okay, so so like when you listen to it, it's like you know, because everyone's been mad at me for a whole month, going, oh, I don't know if one little thing they think is wrong or something like that. Um, because they were going, oh, they were sleeping in the same bed, and it's like. Maybe they weren't. Maybe, maybe it just he threw them that way. Like, like when you listen to it, what was the question? Oh, oh yeah. Cause, cause I'm not sure because it's like, if you, if you listen to it, that's, that's when I was in really deep trance. And it's like, I, I don't even remember that stuff. Like when I woke up from that, the only thing about this entire thing, like when you listen to it, think about this after that, the only thing I remembered of everything I said was something to do with bread. 
So I looked up bakeries, and then it was like four days later. I thought, ah, I have an hour to kill. I think I'll just listen to that reading and see if there's anything on it. And when I did, I was just like, oh, my God. I had no memory of it. But here I am going, oh, and they're putting me in the mind of the killer. And then I'm like attached to his brain while he's going all through the house. And it's like he attacked them so savagely. Um, some, someone started to get up because I said, oh, one of them started to get up and he just shoved her back in her room and just slashed her throat. And it's like, um, um, and then everyone was mad at me because they said, oh, everyone says they were sleeping together and you said he pushed her back in her room. And it's like, they don't realize just how vicious this was, you know, and it, Uh, yeah, well, well, it's like if you listen to their, I pretty much say it, but I don't independently. It's like my brain blocks it out, and that's probably why I can do this. You know? Oh, no, it was, it, he, he cut, he cut Kaylee open from, like, he, he disemboweled her. I mean, he, he brutally, brutally murdered her and her Maddie and Zana and even like brutally without, without hesitation, without toying around. He just went in there and just murdered them. Like, and, and Kaylee, like when, before her father said, oh, she got it worse. Before that, I had already said he cut her open. That was his fantasy. He's really gross. The guy's sick. He's sick as... He's beyond sick. He he literally... I don't even... Can't even think of him that he's human. You know? He's like occupying that body, kind of. Oh, he, you know, he doesn't have as much control as you think. Like he's, he, he, he is in that jail and the government is not going to let him go. They know what's on their hands. He's not going to walk free. I, I just, I, I just can't see that happening due to the nature of this. If the government has to have a hundred people working 40 hours a week to make sure they have what they need to put him away probably with the death penalty, they, that they're going to spend that money because you can't have someone loose in society that would do something like this, what he did. Yeah, it's weird why he went, uh, went, he goes over there. He would have to know it's a death penalty state. He studied this kind of stuff. And I don't know if Washington state is or not. Like he, you know, it was, you'll, you, you should listen to that and you'll know all about even more than I remember, but I, I remember, and I even saw him bury the knife. Like I even said on that reading, I said, he, um, he, and then I go, did you leave town? And then, I, and then I said, he went up to his parents. So it's like, that could be a misinterpretation that his parents, but I'm having some sleuther try to look into who potentially owns property there. Because now it came out on the affidavit that, you know, he, he went to this place two hours away, Clarkston or Lewiston or something like that. And, and then he, once there, he turns off his cell phone for three and a half hours and then turns it back on. Well, in the reading, which is November 22nd, I'm saying he, w what he does with this is he goes to his parents' hunting cabin and he buries the knife. Like, I, I saw him. He wrapped it in, like, a piece of material. He left it bloody. He didn't want to clean it. He It's his trophy that way. And he buried the knife. And then I see it, like, even buried not all that far out from a small tree. And then he buried this larger jar, which I, I didn't go close enough to see. So they had me at his back. So I think just to protect me from seeing all this super trauma. But it felt like there was a body part, the body part. And I, cause I was even thinking, um, did he have formaldehyde or something? Like what did he, he must've put something in. Cause he buried that near it, but not ne with it. So the only logical thing when, like when I, 
only to come to this conclusion the last couple of days it would be that maybe that's so if someone discovered the knife they wouldn't necessarily discover the other because like if they were together then the person would know but if they only discovered one thing they might write it off but so he went up there i'm convinced like because people say okay he stopped at a coffee shop that was right by a river and they you know people are kind of theorizing he probably threw the knife he could have and, and that could turn out that way but I saw him bury it, and I saw him bury it, what it looked like to me, like, because I said it's his family's hunting cabin, or it's, or I said it's a hunting cabin. Um, so, like, I'm going to get, my plan is to make, like, a little map showing where he went, and then all the people who do this sleuthing, they research stuff off my readings, they will look up every single hunting cabin around there. But you know it's a it's a mountain, so he had three hours, so he so so he had three hours to go do this, and he could bury it even if it's a rental hunting cabin because if, if you think about it, it's like he could rent that same one again when he wants to see it a knife knife again. Yeah, and, and um, but it that that reading is mind blowingly. It starts out kind of slow for a couple minutes but then it just as soon as they put me in his mind it was just like and some whack job wrote me he even wrote the tip line and cc'd me and then after that he wrote me three more letters all about fantasizing about how he should have took longer and um ted bundy would have been able to do this and this and in in detailed description emails uh, comparing and I'm like how the hell does this guy writing me know that he wasn't in there very long um do you know what I mean because it wasn't I know and I know and they're so gross I thought of like I they're in my Facebook group but they're way buried down there because it happened about a month ago this guy's writing me uh I sent him to the tip line and um Yes, it's shocking. It's shocking. It's shocking. To, I can't even comprehend in the mind where someone would think that somehow they would even want to do something like that or anything, you know? Yeah, well, did you see this stuff that's coming out? What uh, He used to be part of some chat room when he was like 15 and 16. Did you see that? Oh, he was writing all about how he felt disassociated from the human race. He felt like he was acting. He didn't feel any emotions. He, he didn't feel connected. He felt partly out of his body. He felt like he was always seeing floaters. He felt like he was having urges. Um, one, one, the, yeah, one psychiatrist said that the reason why he was obsessed about not eating any animal stuff is he thought because he had animal, I mean, urges to eat humans. Yeah, so it's like he, as a teenager, he himself knew that he was way messed up. He said being in his body and being in his, having his brain was torture, you know, and, um, yeah, or, or more than capable, like had urges to do them and then try not to do them. And then it's like, he, he said he felt like zero attachment to the human race, zero, he, he said zero emotions. He feels like he's just going through the motions with other people and then so i guess he got addicted to heroin in high school which would make sense if he if he's going through all that where he said at night it's like almost like a nightmare because of all the thoughts that he tries to fight off so um yeah his his brain uh, his brain uh is definitely wrong and he even knew that um as a teenager Oh, they did. So, okay. So in that first reading, I'm even talking about how his parents talk about him behind his back and they're suspicious of him and they worry about him and they know something's wrong with him, but they're like afraid to say something to him. 
and that was the first reading and then there looks like some short reading I put up or something the one where they it was like like about 36 hours before they busted him I put up a reading saying his mom's in danger of losing her life and she better not confront him and then I was like given this big warning that I'm getting a feeling this mother's in danger of getting stabbed if she says anything to him like just go to your police station and give him a DNA thing and you know do do the right thing and stuff or you might end up in the morgue like I did this thing and then like I put it up and then the one night then within the next night after that is when they arrested him so 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 yeah his parents knew he was messed up it's not her fault but it's like he got her attention now that's how he feels like he got her attention now you know and um but they knew they yeah the parents knew something's wrong with him they knew something's wrong with him and i think that they even wondered if it could possibly be him but and 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 where did i put in one of them he brought a little teeny jar of blood with him so he took so he takes some from the scene so he and he, and he brought a little jar of him with them that's in one of the readings too that he then he just oh he's beyond he's beyond he's he's so sick that it's past sick it's like this isn't this isn't even a human or something you would think but like okay all these murders i've ever done and and the only one I ever saw, they showed me real demons and stuff, was this Lori Vallow case where she murdered her children over there in Rexburg. Um, they, that one, they sh actually showed me demons. They showed me in and out, going in and out. I mean, the whole thing was crazy, right? These people are nuts. Barbecued their children's leg. She, they, she chopped up her daughter's leg and barbecued it, and they made sandwiches. I'm not laughing. And I'm like freaking out the entire time. I've never seen anything like this in any reading and there's demonic stuff going on and um and no other murder have I seen out and out that but you would almost think that anyone who did murder would have some kind of attachments but it just feels to me like he's not even human. That's all I can express it. Like there's it doesn't feel like he's human. Technically, I guess he is, right? Technically. And I'm not suggesting he's an alien or anything like that. But technically, he, 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 see, you know, he appears to be a human, but there's nothing about his brain that feels like a human's brain. I guess that's... There's nothing there that feels human. It's almost, it's almost like if it was like just a pure predatory animal brain or something like that. I'm shocked at like, I was shocked too when I opened up with Anna, how traumatized these um, young people still felt over on the other side. You know, you, you know, it's her about her trying to give her your boyfriend and all that kind of stuff, her boyfriend and the spotted stuff. And it's like, so at least, you know, that she exists and, and then you could just kind of like send her love and don't feel guilty about little trivial things. She could care less about that. You know, that, that's not even relevant when you're on the other side at all. Just send love and talk to her and say, Hey, and stuff, you know? Okay. You're welcome. Okay, you guys take care. Bye. A couple of days after the reading with Kaylee, I had an experience where I was meditating in the morning and I felt the presence of Kaylee. And it was actually a really neat um, blending of energy. And she wanted to make sure that Jack Ducour understood not to feel guilty if he were to go out with any of her friends. The, I swear, I'm not making this up. I'm not, like, grasping at straws. It was really interesting 
Because in the reading, she was saying this to this girl, and the girl said, oh, Kayla used to always say that every time she broke up with someone. And, um, but, Kay but Kaylee was serious about that. And she also, then when she connected with me a couple of days later, she wanted to make sure that Jack also knew to not feel guilty and to feel, feel free or to, she would encourage him to go out, uh, and, and seek comfort and find comfort. And, uh, it's okay to go out with her friends. That's literally, that's literally, I know it's weird, but I'm just passing it on. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Reverend Donna Serafina. I am a psychic medium. I have a background in criminal justice and social work, and I'm really, really glad you joined me. If you like the content, please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you again soon. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can get notifications of new uploads. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye.